Welcome back fourth grade. I hope that you guys had an awesome long weekend. So today we are going to do a part one of a read aloud. So this is called The Magic Finger by Roald Dahl and this was probably one of my favorite books growing up. So I hope that you guys like it too. The farm next to ours is owned by Mr. and Mrs. Gregg. The Greggs have two children, both of them boys. Their names are Philip and William. Sometimes I go over to their farm to play with them. I am a girl and I am eight years old. Philip is also eight years old. William is three years older. He is 10. What? Oh, all right then, he is 11. Last week, something very funny happened to the Gregg family. I'm going to tell you about it as best as I can. Now, the one thing that Mr. Greg and his two boys loved to do more than anything else was to go hunting. Every Saturday morning, they would take their guns and go off into the woods to look for animals and birds to shoot. Even Philip, who was only eight years old, had a gun of his own. I can't stand hunting. I just can't stand it. It doesn't seem right to me that men and boys should kill animals just for the fun they get out of it. So I used to try to stop Philip and William from doing it. Every time I went over to their farm, I would do my best to talk them out of it. But they only laughed at me. I even said something about it once to Mr. Gregg, but he just walked on past me as if I wasn't there. Then one Saturday morning, I saw Philip and William coming out of the woods with their father, and they were carrying a lovely young deer. This made me so cross that I started shouting at them. The boys laughed and made faces at me, and Mr. Gregg told me to go home and mind my own P's and Q's. Well, that did it. I saw red, and before I was able to stop myself, I did something I never meant to do. I put the magic finger on them all. Oh dear, oh dear. I even put it on Mrs. Gregg, who wasn't there. I put it on the whole Gregg family. For months, I had been telling myself that I would never put the magic finger upon anyone again, not after what happened to my teacher, old Mrs. Winter. Poor old Mrs. Winter. One day, we were in class, and she was teaching us spelling. Stand up, she said to me, and spell cat. That's an easy one, I said. K-A-T. You are a stupid little girl, Mrs. Winter said. I am not a stupid little girl, I cried. I am a very nice little girl. Go and stand in the corner, Mrs. Winter said. Then I got cross and I saw red and I put the magic finger on Mrs. Winter, good and strong, and almost at once, guess what? Whiskers began growing out of her face. They were long black whiskers, just like the ones you see on a cat, only much bigger. And how fast they grew. Before we had time to think, they were out to her ears. Of course, the whole class started screaming with laughter. And then Mrs. Winter said, Will you be so kind as to tell me what you find so madly funny, all of you? And then she turned around to write something on the blackboard. We saw that she had grown a tail as well. It was a huge bushy tail. I cannot begin to tell you what happened after that. But if any of you are wondering whether Mrs. Winter is quite all right again now, the answer is no. And she never will be. The magic finger is something I've been able to do all my life. 
I can't tell you just how I do it because I don't even know myself. But it always happens when I get cross, when I see red. Then I get very, very hot all over. Then the tip of the forefinger of my right hand begins to tingle most terribly. And suddenly a sort of flash comes out of me, a quick flash like something electric. It jumps out and touches the person who has made me cross. And after that, the magic finger is upon him or her, and things begin to happen. Well, the magic finger was now upon the whole of the Greg family, and there was no taking it off again. I ran home and waited for things to happen. They happened fast. I shall now tell you what those things were. I got the whole story from Philip and William the next morning after it was all over. In the afternoon of the very same day that I put the magic finger on the Gregg family, Mr. Gregg and Philip and William went out hunting once again. This time they were going after wild ducks, so they headed towards the lake. In the first hour, they got ten birds. In the next hour, they got another six. What a day, cried Mr. Gregg. This is the best yet. He was beside himself with joy. Just then, four more wild ducks flew over their heads. They were flying very low. They were easy to hit. Bang, 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 went the guns. The ducks flew on. We missed, said Mr. Gregg. That's funny. Then to everyone's surprise, the four ducks turned around and came flying back, right back to the guns. Hey, said Mr. Gregg, what on earth are they doing? They are really asking for it this time. He shot at them again. So did the boys. And again, they all missed. Mr. Gregg got very red in the face. It's the light, he said. It's getting too dark to see. Let's go home. So they started for home, carrying with them the 16 birds they had shot before. But the four ducks would not leave them alone. They now began flying around and around the hunters as they walked away. Mr. Gregg did not like it one bit. Be off, he cried, and he shot at them many more times but it was no good. He simply could not hit them. All the way home, those four ducks flew around in the sky above their heads and nothing would make them go away. Late that night, after Philip and William had gone to bed, Mr. Gregg went outside to get some wood for the fire. He was crossing the yard when all at once he heard the call of a wild duck in the sky. He stopped and looked up. The night was very still. There was a thin yellow moon over the trees on the hill and the sky was filled with stars. Then Mr. Gregg heard the noise of wings flying low over his head and he saw the four ducks dark against the night sky flying very close together. They were going around and around the house. Mr. Gregg forgot about the firewood and hurried back indoors. He was now quite afraid. He did not like what was going on, but he said nothing about it to Mrs. Gregg. All he said was, come on, let's go to bed. I feel tired. So they went to bed and to sleep. When morning came, Mr. Gregg was the first to wake up. He opened his eyes. He was about to put out a hand for his watch to see the time, but his hand wouldn't come out. That's funny, he said. Where is my hand? He lay still, wondering what was up. Maybe he had hurt that hand in some way. He tried the other hand. That wouldn't come out either. He sat up. Then, for the first time, he saw what he looked like. 
He gave a yell and jumped out of bed. Mrs. Gregg woke up, and when she saw Mr. Gregg standing there on the floor, she gave a yell too, for he was now a tiny little man. He was maybe as tall as the seat of a chair, but no taller. And where his arms had been, he had a pair of duck's wings instead. So in order to see what happens next, you guys are going to have to tune in for our read aloud tomorrow. What do you think is going to happen to Mr. Greg?